Welcome back guys. Today I want to demonstrate some repeater only logic and the reason why is because I needed to use repeater only logic in this circuit right here. Now this is a, a kind of like a pre-decoder I guess. All it is is a decoder and a mux. The decoder determines where the data is going. The difference is this does it in line in serial so a serial input goes in and a serial input comes out of these outputs. And that takes quite a lot of circuitry to make everything work in two ticks, two ticks throughput. Uh, so yeah, so this part is the decoder, this part is the mux, and yeah. So what is a decoder? Well, a decoder just decodes a X amount of inputs into X amount of outputs, usually more than the input. Um, so yeah, so how do I achieve this without any torches or comparators? Because any torch or comparator would break this. Um, I can demonstrate why. I can demonstrate for the torches. Um, comparators are a little bit weird. I'm not really sure on the exact tick timings but I don't think it's exactly two ticks so I think that's why it breaks whenever I use comparators in that and I just tend to stay away from um, comparators and torches for two ticks but torches are a lot easier to see why if you have a torch that is powered on and off eight times in a row in quick succession I think it's if it's under three ticks it will burn out so we'll watch this here and there we go, burned out. This means we can only really use repeaters to do two ticks, serial logic. Okay, so what is a decoder? A decoder, when you boil it down, it's just nots and nands. And I can show you why. So if you have a, let's say if you needed a two bit decoder, you'd have a lots of lots of two two input nands joined up and I can demonstrate this here with this decoder it's just these lines are basically nands and the nots are on this line and the ors are here so let's say if I wanted to have a number get decoded say five you can see here this is in nand so when all inputs are on the output is off But I want to decode a 5, not a 0, or 15 in this case. So all I would have to do is say which bits are important, and then I put inverters, I put nots on the bits that don't matter. So effectively, this is just the same as doing this now, since it's double inversion. I can just replace that with that and this is the same as doubling version so I can just replace this and this say hi to a fellow builder so now this is looking a lot more like this oops so if I input a 5 you can see the output is off but if I input anything else it powers back on and this is all a decoder is using knots very simple. So I can demonstrate a two bit decoder right here. So we'll have zero, one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. So by joining up lots and lots of different gates, you can create a lot of things. But this doesn't tell us how to do things with repeater only logic. So as you can see, repeaters are quite simple. They take an input and output a full um, 15 signal strength output. They can be latched. Oops. To stop inputs from going through. And you can store data. So they are quite a versatile block. 
because one block can do quite a lot of things. However, this does not tell us how to do NOR, and NOR is the most important. Not, sorry, apologies. Uh, so, this right here is a not get for repeat run logic. And you can probably see this if I show you all these lines, you can see it everywhere. Here. So how does this work? Well, if I just wanted to do not without anything else, nothing really happens. You can't really invert a signal that isn't there. Because all this can do is pass on information that was behind it. And if there's no information in the first place, it can't invert that information. So we have to introduce clock, a clock line. So how this works is it effectively says it effectively acts as a inverter when I have no input from the side. So let's say if we have these two lines get powered on at the same time. So the clock line is getting powered on and the inputs get powered on. You can see no data is allowed through because this obviously locks it before I can actually pass data through. However, if there's no input on the here, the clock goes straight through. So that means if I have a one, I will get a zero. If I have a zero, I'll get a one. And this is the only way to actually get in not with repeater only logic. But as soon as I can make a not, I can make a NAND. And as soon as I can make a NAND, I can make anything I want, basically. So yeah, cool. So now I can show you this thing. This thing takes a 4-bit decoder, outputs it to a MUX where these lines come in and tells it where to go. So it has 16 total outputs. And yeah, okay. So when you're working with repeater-only logic, you have to take in consideration that if you need knots, uh, you're probably going to need a lot of them. And a lot of knots means a lot of clock lines. And a lot of clock lines means a lot of lag. So I've tried my hardest to reduce the amount of clock lines in this, which is yellow. I try, I'm trying to keep my things color coded for ease, of, like, for ease of like understanding what's happening. I know it can get quite confusing when everything's in one color, so I'll try to color code more often. But I do quite like just having one color because I obviously understand everything and one color is just less OCD-ness. <laughs> but yeah. So as you can see here, these clock lines, these are clock lines all over here. And here is the clock. The clock is two tick. On off, on off, on off. And I've taken a few steps to reduce him out of lag. One of them is to actually just localize where the clock is needed, which you can see here. You can see that this clock line comes all the way up here and goes to all of these lines. However, these aren't actually clocking because these aren't actually being used. They don't need to be used. So all I have to do for that is take the input, the output from the decoder and say, which clock line do I need to actually use? So I can see here, this line is off while all the rest are on locks, unlocks this repeater and lets the clock go through and not. The reason why this is on and off because it's a high and low signal and it's just the it's just a byproduct of the clock. If you lock things you can still get a full solid signal like this. You just have to lock it at the right time. So it's just because there's no actual logic here yet that's why it's pulsing. But yeah, and another way to minimize the amount of clock lines is to combine multiple clock lines. So as you can see, this one has a function here. It locks the decode output, and it also out, uh, reads, well, not the output of the um, 
decoder. And yeah, and another way to do it is pretty much just mirror everything. So if you are doing something on one side of a clock line, you can do something on another side because blocks can take multiple outputs from a single block. So utilize that fact. So yeah, so let's demonstrate actually doing something. So let me just quickly set this up and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've inputted into the queue here. In reality, there would be a massive memory bank here, streaming in data instructions every two ticks. So this thing would not stop. This would not be limited to just this queue. This is just for demonstration purposes. So let's get this going. Okay, so we should see the values three. We should see outputs on the ports three, one, two, seven, and four. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So let's get this here. Three, two, one. And there we go. That was fast. And it's meant to be fast. <laughs> you can see that it outputted a distinct signal to every port that was addressed. So it worked. All using no torches and a single comparator for the clock. I'm not even going to count this because I could just do this with repeaters, so heck you. <laughs> But yeah, effectively, all the logic is repeater only. And it's that simple. So yeah, that's it. That's everything about this um, system here. I am planning to make the CPU. <laughs> I have no idea when I'll be able to finish it, but I'm slowly going through every component from right from the instructions all the way down to the actual data processing. I'm, I'm doing, doing it in that direction. Uh, so first I've got the decoder, I've memory designed for the instructions coming in, uh, those are some slices of different memories, uh, and yeah, do not expect this to be out soon, because <laughs> it's a very complex CPU and I don't want to reveal too much about it, but it's going to be quite something if it does, if I ever finish it. Um. But yeah, if you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. It really does help me out. And yeah, look out for more content, because I've got some. And hopefully the quality will be better. I do apologize, I my mic is broken right now, so I have to settle for a phone mic on it, on some headphones, so hopefully I'll get better tech soon. But yeah, catch you later guys.